please use caution trying this at home. Potential serious burns and explosions can occur. Hey everyone, it's a rainy day here in western Washington. Big surprise. Hey, I'm Dave Anderson. Welcome to Helicool's Helipad. And uh, I've got a perfect project today for rainy days like this. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making some fire starters. And we're going to be doing this the uh, off the grid way. And what fire starters are is there's a little bit of wax and some uh, secret ingredient. I'll be showing you how to make these. Alright, well the first thing that we do is I'm going to light up my barrel stove. Uh, this, <laughs> this barrel stove is actually made out of two rims, so it's often called a rim stove. But uh, I just built the topper out of it, and uh, the top actually comes off, so, so it has uh, built out of two rims. Actually uh, a donor rim for the feet as well, and uh, some parts off of a washing machine drum tell that by right here and that's just for uh, ventilation for the inside it's starting to get kind of nasty out here so go ahead and start this fire up Just fine. But you know what? I'm going to tear one of these off and uh, really get it started because, well, that's what these are for. Now this paper will burn up real quick, so adding adding one of these will uh, give it a little bit more staying power. Should get this thing going. Well, after it's good and lit, it's starting to get warm. You should have your uh, Goodwill pot, um, so you're not ruining anything. Uh, anything nice? Can you just grab? Whatever kind of donor uh, wax that you have, some of this stuff uh, people just gave to me or get it from Goodwill or I think my sister even got some stuff from where she works, whole case of stuff for a dollar. Um, I just told her to get uh, all that she possibly could, but I'm going to remove the plastic, break this up and start it uh, melting inside this pan. Now then it'll take some time. To get this all melted down because the surface area of the first few sticks is just barely touching the pot. But as soon as the wax starts melting and more surface area can be created for the uh, heat to transfer to the sticks, they will start melting down. Now you don't really care about the, the uh, wicks that are in there, uh, they're not going to bother anything. They're going to burn up just like everything else. Um, so if you happen to get some in there, no big deal. And we'll just wait until this thing uh, starts melting down. All right, well, we're getting pretty close this is some nice uh, clear wax or white when it get when it dries uh, but I just have a really big spoon so I can just take one ladle of it pour it into each of the uh, egg carton spaces and then we'll show you how that works Now I've got a whole stack of these things because, well, I asked people to save them for me 
and um, people do uh, mighty kind of them so my thought is is that you uh, you do an assembly line and you start with just filling up each one of these with just one oh about half to three quarters scoop of the liquid careful not to burn yourself because this stuff is mighty hot all right and then I switch swish it around so that it covers and seals in the entire um, uh, the entire crate and uh, that's important because well our next step is going to uh, fill that up with a secret ingredient when you're adding new wax to the mix you want to make sure not to splash because like I said this this stuff is pretty hot and it, it will burn you if you're not careful so when you put it in don't just drop it in but set it in there and just be really careful Now once you got, well, I use like I said, I usually do an assembly line. I do almost every every carton that I have, but I just lay them down and wait for them to dry. As you can see, they're coagulated pretty good. Now it's time for me to make the secret ingredient. Alrighty, now this is how you make the secret ingredient. Get your mixing pan and your wood shavings that's the sawdust this actually is uh, uh, cedar and it went through a thickness planer so these are basically shavings but you can see I save I save quite a bit I mean I got a five gallon bucket and it was packed full um, and so anytime I make uh, make anything with my thickness planer I always keep the shavings just for this purpose now this next step you don't want to do too close to the fire uh, we're gonna add some kerosene now this is just a uh, white gas you can buy this uh, anywhere at any hardware store or heck even Walmart or any camping place has it so we're just gonna add not too much liberal amount but not not terribly too much Okay, and get my spoon, and we're gonna mix it all up inside there. I don't know where the stick come from, but we don't want that. So what we want is a somewhat wet mix all the way down through. Not soupy, but wet. Uh, just slightly wet Okay, and I'll start keep mixing this till it's ready All right now that it's mixed up and it's just it's just wet, but it's uh You know, it's not soaked and I just put about half a spoonful In each side And I recommend getting a nitrate glove on and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna tamp these down squish them down squish the air out of them and you're squishing them down inside the hole
Okay. Now sawdust will pack a little bit tighter than this, but uh, this stuff works just the same. Now that I have it all to here, now again, I recommend doing an assembly line, um, you know, doing a whole bunch of these and then, and then going to the next step, but we're just gonna go ahead and go to the next step on this one right now. All right, next step is to take what you filled and just put one little scoop of wax over the top. And what you're basically doing is you're trying to seal this in. Now be careful because, like I said, there's uh, there's kerosene in this and you don't want to get it too terribly close to any open flame. Being up here is just fine. It's, I mean, this, this wax is hot, but it's not hot enough to uh, catch the catch the kerosene on fire. Now the idea is to get everything completely sealed. So you might have to go back over it, fill it just a little bit more because you want to keep that uh, fuel sealed inside each one of these containers so that uh, pretty much you have a super presto log. Wax will obviously help it um, continue to burn, but uh, there you have it. You have, you have some uh, super fire starters on this. I'm just gonna let this wax uh, cool off and, and we'll have a finished product. Well, while you're at it, when you, especially if you have a stove like this, um, and it's it's outdoors quite a bit, um, you're going to want to uh, do what I call seasoning, um, and it's and it's relatively just like seasoning a uh, cast iron um, a cast iron pot. Um, I've spilled a little wax on here, so I'm just going to go ahead and wipe that up. But uh, what I'm gonna show you next is how to season the top of a steel, a steel pot. What I'm gonna show you is how to season and keep the rust off a uh, outdoor um, stove just like this. So this is just a uh, Pam, well it's a, it's a knockoff. It's, um, Walmart brand, but it's vegetable oil Okay, so you take your vegetable oil and this is a you spray it on a, a hot a Hot stove This this isn't terribly hot right now, but um, You get it to smoking and What that'll do is it'll it'll uh, burn the oil in there and, and create like a, a char finish that you can actually cook on this. It'll be uh, clean. Uh, of course, we're using um, vegetable oil, but it'll be clean and uh, and and able to cook things on that, that you can actually eat. It's not going to poison you or anything like that. And and the biggest thing here is, of course, it keeps it from rusting. I want to show you what I mean. If you don't use it. This is another stove that I made for my brother. I ended up actually getting it back because he, he got another one, but he kept the top to it. But uh, this is what happens if you don't, if you don't uh, spray some Pam on it and get that uh, nice finish. 
uh, and you leave it outside even though the paint you know is on it it'll it'll still tend to rust um, and uh, that's not very sightly and well it'll start to eat away and destroy your stove after time so good spray of Pam will do the trick just just nicely and uh, I'm gonna wait for that to get kind of smoking up and, and then I'll start wiping it off with the blue paper towel one thing for sure is you don't want to leave your paper towels that have uh, the Pam cooking spray in it at least around my house uh, my cat loves to loves the taste of it apparently and she will rip it all up and suck on it and get all the oil out of it and then spit the pieces back out and that's what she did here she she loves that stuff so <laughs> word to the wise is clean up your paper towels after you're done wiping down your stove all right she's starting to smoke a little bit so this is the perfect time to take that that blue paper towel this is just a shop towel now make sure that your shop towel is not wet with water because if if it is it'll start to steam and the steam will give you a burn so make sure it's dry and uh, and and basically we're just taking the top the top and spreading it around so that it gets a good coat on all of the surface like I said uh, I've I've made bacon bacon and eggs on these before um, you know, as long as your eggs don't roll off the side, because I don't really have a, a layer, uh, a, a, a block anyway, a guard. But uh, you can cook on these things. And, you know, when, you're, when your pan gets too hot, you know, you just set it over here on the side where the, where the horseshoes are. But, but my main point is, is, is uh, the uh, Pam or cooking oil spray will definitely put a good uh, patina or uh, a, a seasoning on your, your stove. And even if it's stored outside, which which mine is, it will keep it from rusting. All right, well, this has been another great tip. Continue to watch. And here's the finished finished products. I got this one still just a little bit, you can tell, is not quite uh, coagulated yet. This is uh, pretty darn close. But uh, each one of these will definitely get your fire going. Um, I love giving these away uh, because I, I just, I don't know, maybe I'm just fascinated with fire. Um, call me crazy, but um, you don't really want to uh, stack these um, like this uh, if it is going to be in a very hot uh, trailer or a hot climate because these will actually stick together over time. So if you're just going to give them away as uh, gifts... Um, you know, for for fire starting or whatever, um, you're just gonna want to um, keep these, close them up, close them up just like this, and uh, there's there's the gift. It's it's uh, you know it comes with the comes with its own wrapper. It's pretty cool, and that's that's kind of what I like. Is I don't have to wrap it now, but uh, if if you're not if you're not giving it away and you're just you're storing it in a fairly cool place, um, I would recommend removing the top lids and then just stacking it just like this because it it saves a lot of space and you can put oh probably a stack of 20, 30 of them together and it's only going to be maybe you know maybe 15 inches high if that. So uh, anyway, um, I hope that you uh, have success with your fire starting. Um, this has been another episode with uh, with me, Dave Anderson, and uh, Heli Cools Helipad. Um, please subscribe, and uh, you'll see other stuff like this, um, some other scouting type videos, and some camping tips. Uh, I love doing off the grid things, especially in Washington, where it tends to rain a lot and it's raining again right now. Really big surprise. Um, all right. Until next time, remember to subscribe. Thanks. Take care.